Scipio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Admiral. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here on this misty, rainy day. I like the way you described that. Yeah. Delegate Michael Height. Good morning, Robert. Great to be here. And via telephone, Representative Alex Mooney, candidate for Senate in the upcoming Republican primary. Early voting ends tomorrow, and the election, of course, is May 14. Alex, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, everybody. What is uh, your campaign day like today, Alex? Well, I'm driving. Uh, I, I left my home in Charlestown this morning. I'm driving. Actually, I'm in Martinsburg right now, driving all the way to Parkersburg. I'm going to spend the day there doing, doing some media and rallying voters and going even door knocking. And then there's a, another rally in Charleston tomorrow I'm going to hit in Kanawha County, maybe do some door knocking in Mason County. I have uh, teams of volunteers and I work with other candidates that I support to go door to door and just remind folks to vote. This is sort of the phase in the election where you just want to remind people to get out and vote. You know, there's turnout. Turnout has been uh, really low uh, across the country and even here in West Virginia. You know, most a lot of turnouts driven by the presidential race. And obviously, uh, Donald Trump has no serious Republican uh, opposition in the primary on May 14th. So. A lot of folks are like going to, you know, think they'll wait till November to vote for Trump. But we have a very competitive primary, you know, up and down the ballot, you know, from things. Obviously, I, I think things like Board of Education are very important. That's selected in the primary. But in my case, you know, I have a head-to-head race. You have a, I'm, I'm giving voters a clear choice. Voters don't always get a clear choice in elections. Sometimes there's one candidate. Sometimes there's two candidates, but there's not much difference between the two. In my race, there's a clear choice. I'm a conservative Republican with a voting record to prove it. My opponent, Jim Justice, elected as a Democrat, got lots of liberal votes. So there's a very big difference between the two of us. And I'm giving you know, the residents of the Eastern Panhandle and the whole state here a very clear choice. They don't always get to choose between a liberal Republican and a conservative. And I need people to vote, man. I need people to get out there and vote. Um, you know, it's a six-year term. It's a long time. You know, I'll fight for them. And what they, frankly, your listeners deserve a conservative U.S. senator. And that's me, Alex Mooney. And, I, and I've proven that over my 10 years. So folks need to vote, man. Get out the vote, everybody. What is your polling telling you as this race gets close to its conclusion, Alex? You know, a lot of voters make up their mind at the end. I mean, even like half. What's What's interesting for me, uh, Rob, is I'm not, I do door to door every day the past several weeks, and it's almost like a poll. And I'm doing polls too, and the polls have this race closing very, very fast. And, and I'm still behind, but only by a little bit. And I think I'll overtake them by election day. Um, but you know, if I do door to door, I might probably done several hundred doors this week alone so that's like a poll most folks are still like oh, okay well tell me the differences and they're, they're it's very rare i meet somebody who is absolutely voting for for my opponent jim justice a, a lot of them are are looking for an alternative um but they are still figuring that out they're still like like i was down south i was actually in mcdowell county on uh what was it tuesday night i was in mcdowell county the most southern county in west virginia i was and i drove six hours to dc to vote um uh, but voters there are still figuring out. I actually door knocked in, in Welsh, West Virginia, and the first, talked to three people. All three were happy to vote for me. I know that's not a poll. It's not 500. But all three are like, oh, yeah, we'll vote for you. This is great. We want a conservative. They weren't like, oh, no, no, I'm for Jim Justice. Oh, no, no. I mean, Jim Justice, people are really looking for an alternative. And by the way, the guy won't show up anywhere. He's done a disservice to the, to the people. He, he won't come on the radio and debate me. He won't come on TV and debate me. He won't go to any forum. He's gone to precisely zero Republican club forums. He is nowhere to be found. He's hiding in his basement like Joe Biden, trying to hide from the voters' his record. That is not right. Normally there's a debate. we got two serious candidates for the U.S. Senate here. And the media, I don't mean you, Rob, but I mean like, you know, I told Hoppy Kershaw, come on, man, set up a debate. He, would, he didn't do it. I mean, he, he tried, and Jim Justice didn't say yes, so he's just like, oh, forget it. I'm like, no, man, you should have had a debate. You know, you, you, and if he won't show up, have it anyway and put an empty chair there. That's what you got to do. So, I mean, he, he shouldn't be able to get away with hiding from the voters like that. He's running no campaign whatsoever. He doesn't really want the job, to be honest with you. So, um, look, I'm, I'm very confident coming into this. You remember two years ago, David McKinley released a poll having him winning by double digits a week before the election, and I beat him by 19 percentage points. But, you know, I'm talking to the voters who vote in primaries right now. And, I'm, and I believe I'm convincing them. 
Thank you, Alex. Bill Stubblefield. Yeah, good morning, uh, uh, Alex. Uh, glad that you joined us this morning. Hey, Bill. Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, I guess first question, last week uh, uh, you voted to oppose tabling the motion for uh, the Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, had introduced to vacate the Speaker's chair. Uh, you were one, I think, of 10 or 11 Republicans. What was your logic? Were you thinking about your vote? Well, I wanted to get it onto the floor, and, and I was not, I, and vote it down. I mean, I'm not for vacating the speaker. I made that clear. I sent a press statement out. I don't think switching speakers makes does any good. But, you know, this motion to table is a delay tactic. I don't think this should be hanging out there. I think we should vote it up or down. And, you know, at this point, uh, you have every speaker, Frank. Look, we switched speakers last year, and not a whole lot's changed. And people ask me everywhere I go, it's like, well, what about the speaker? What about the speaker? It's not just the speaker of the House. It's the whole Republican conference. I mean, you know, in the House of Delegates there. You know, there, there are probably a dozen or, or more aggressively liberal Republicans who will vote with the Democrats. And when we have a three-seat majority, that's not the fall of the Speaker of the House. You know, so, but I do, I do, I do like, uh, you know, Mike Johnson. I think he's conservative. His principles are correct. I do think he should be stronger. I mean, he did say no Ukraine funding until we secure our border. I mean, that was his position for a long time, and then he didn't do that. And people are pretty ticked off about that border. I mean, you guys know this. I mean, we have no border security. We need Republicans like me in there who will fight for border security. We can't just roll over and give the Democrats everything they want and get nothing for conservatives. People are pretty ticked off about this stuff. And, and there's some points there. Yeah. And so, you know, I, you know I, didn't, I didn't think a delay tactic, a motion to table and delay it. I want an up or down vote right then and there. But I was not gonna, I'm, I'm not intending to vote to vacate the speaker at this time. Yeah, thanks for the clarification. That was not clear with the, uh, the news blurbs that came out of that particular vote. So. Yeah. No, no, I wouldn't. You know, we tried it. Like I said, I mean, he's a conservative man. But look, when I listened to Marjorie Taylor Greene read off her, 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 the things she was upset about, she had some fair points there. She had some very fair points there. We've not passed our spending bills. You know, the FBI is funded. The, they, these guys raided Mar-a-Lago. Look what they're doing to Donald Trump. You know, and taxpayers are funding that. We have every right to protect President Trump and all American people. The FISA wiretapping, you know, which we shouldn't let people go searching our emails and our phone calls without a warrant in this country. We shouldn't let the government do that. I mean, she has some legitimate concerns. And I, I agree with well, actually most of her concerns. I agree with them. I just don't think switching speakers would, would fix the problem. And now's not the time to do that. But what was interesting about that, though, uh, 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 is that the Democrats made it clear they were not going to vote to remove the speaker, which they didn't do that for Kevin McCarthy. You know, they, they threw him out with the eight Republicans. Of course, I was not one of those eight either. But you know, in this case, the Democrats wanted to keep him in there. And now that's, you know, I mean, that does at least highlight that, that the chamber has those uh, divisions occurring. But look, I'm trying to do my part. I'm, I'm one vote. I'll be one vote in the U.S. Senate. And right now I'm just trying to let folks know I'm willing to fight for them. Um, get out and vote May 14th. Go ahead, guys. Mr. Height. Good morning, Alex. Good to have you here. Um, my, my question is, deals with the Senate side. So one would assume that whoever wins um, in this primary, whether it be you or the governor, um, is going to probably win in uh, the general election in November and move yeah. on to the yeah, Senate. Right. Um, yeah. and, and I've learned to never count you out. So, um, you know, Thank keep you. working. <laughs> um, so my question is, when you let's say it, it is you as the nominee and you win in November and you become our next senator. Um, and that would seem like it could possibly flip the Senate to Republican control. What do you think needs to be the focus of a Republican-led Senate um, going into this next administration? The focus of a Republican-led Senate? You know, uh, I, I like Jim Jordan, who's endorsed me. By the way, I should mention, you guys saw Ted Cruz came out here did a rally for me last week, right? Yes. Y'all saw yep. that? Yes, in fact, yes. we had you on to promote the rally, I believe. Right. Yeah, that's right. All right, thanks. And then, and I've been endorsed also by Rand Paul. We did people, and I've been endorsed by Congressman Jim Jordan, and, oh, by the way, over 30 Republican West Virginia legislators have endorsed me and eight Republican state senators, and not one has endorsed Jim Justice. I should mention that. Um, uh, we need a Senate that fights. Jim Jordan has his book, Do What You Said You Would Do. All I want to do as a conservative Republican, is what the Republican platform of the United States of America says. Balance the budget. You guys see a balanced budget? This debt is crazy. The deficit's going to $35 trillion, and frankly, neither party's doing a very good job here controlling that. 
So I don't vote for these Biden spending bills. Biden keeps passing trillion dollar spending bills with throwing it into the debt. I vote no on that stuff. Of course, Jim Justice is all for it. He's criticizing me for voting against it. But we need Republicans who will balance our budget. How about that? That's not even controversial. I don't know any Republican, even the most liberal Republican that I can think of, who doesn't believe in a balanced budget. But we don't do it. We don't do it. And voters are sick and tired of it, and we're bankrupting our country. Right now, the interest on the debt is more than the, the entire cost of funding the United States military. That's never happened before. We're literally paying more to pay interest payments on this debt than to fund our military. This is going the wrong direction, guys. So we need to do that. I think, I think most senators want to do that. There are a few liberals. Lisa Murkowski is a liberal. Um, look, when I voted to repeal Obamacare, I always use this example. Remember, there are three senators who wouldn't repeal Obamacare. Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins, and the last minute John McCain did a little thumbs-down thing, and we couldn't repeal Obamacare. And by the way, Jim Justice criticized the Republican Party for repealing Obamacare. And so people want us to fight for their freedoms. We need people that will do that. And so that's when I see the direction go there. Hopefully we win by a few races. we got Pennsylvania, Ohio, Montana, even Arizona. There's a lot of other seats we need to win in order to have uh, the majority. We also need conservative judges. I mean, the one thing that has helped save this country is the United States Supreme Court and federal judges who put a stop to the craziness you know, girl, boys and girls' bathrooms and sports and stuff. We obviously need to, as a senator, I get to confirm judges. Jim Justice, by the way, put his chief of staff's wife as a, on the West Virginia Supreme Court, and, and she's an animal rights activist and supports homosexual marriage. She's a liberal. So, you know, we need conservative justices that, that are in there at every level, district, circuit, and supreme. That's something a senator does. So we need, you know, we need senators that will do that, and that's, you know, Donald Trump was successful and putting good judges on there, and that's helped our country uh, be saved. Our Constitution is worth fighting for. Our freedoms are worth fighting for. And so hopefully I'll be one of 51, 52, 53 Republican senators who have the guts to balance the budget, get the bureaucracy under control, stop giving decision-making to the Department of Environment when they attack the coal industry. Oh, yeah, Joe Biden just two weeks ago said if coal, if coal isn't carbon neutral in eight years, we're going to shut it all down. Well, that's not even feasible. This is an attack on the coal industry. What we do is we defund that. We have to fight that stuff. If we don't, we're going to lose our coal jobs. I mean, I could give you a list of 100 things we need to do. We don't have time. But the point is you need Republicans who will actually fight back, not go along to get along, not be Democrat light. And that's why I'm running. Alex, does you remain loyal to Donald Trump despite the fact that he endorsed your opponent, yeah. Jim Justice. Yeah. Yeah, he endorsed me two years ago, and he thinks I'm a great congressman. And, you know, I'm actually more – more of the Donald Trump mold than my liberal opponent, who, by the way, was recruited by Mitch McConnell. Talk about the irony of that. I mean, like I mentioned, I was endorsed by Rand Paul and Ted Cruz and Mike Lee. Senate leader Mitch McConnell came to Lewisburg, and, and Jim Justice brags about this, to recruit him to run for office. So, of course, we need Donald Trump back in there. Um, I mean, for four years as a congressman, I fought for his policies. I stood with him when we passed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017. That reduced the tax rates on employers. We started bringing jobs back from overseas. We need those manufacturing jobs back from China. Meantime, heck, Jim Justice tried the largest tax increase in the history of West Virginia at that time. And, D and Jim Justice didn't even vote for the man in 2016. I voted for him. So, yes, I, I am going to support Donald Trump. He's the leader of our party. He's done great stuff. I'm all for him. We absolutely need him back. Yeah. And, look, I, but I'm still – but, I look, obviously I disagree with his endorsement decision in this race. Obviously I disagree with that. But I, the voters, you know, I think the voters know that I'm the fighter in this race. Alex, you used a couple of words. I want to come back time together. Use the word uh, reduce the budget and also guts. Uh, one of our big issues facing us is the Social Security and Medicare, the third rail of politics. Would you address those? How would you address them? Um, yeah, entitlement programs, let me make it clear. If there's ever is a, there's a lot of talk about, you know, government shutdowns and things. Those, those do not affect mandatory spending programs like Medicare. There, there has been efforts among Republicans to take the Medicare dollars, the same money, the amount of money, give it to the state, and let the state make the rules on Medicare. Um, I'm, I'm not Medicare, rather Medicaid. Sorry, Medicaid. Medicare is, is, for, the, uh, is for seniors. Medicaid is for uh, the poor. So on Medicaid specifically, letting the states make those decisions has been uh, a policy that's been pushed. But, look, these things need to be solved. People are living longer, which is great that people are living longer, but we need to make sure Medicare – and Social Security are solvent for the future, and that's something both parties need to need to address. Um, but you know, but absolutely in no way uh, touch Social Security or Medicare for seniors that are on it now. We've made that clear. The Democrats always attack Republicans when they, when this issue comes up. 
It's like Medicare, they call it, or Social Security scare. Um, but, look, it's great that we're living longer. People are living to their 80s. Babies born now are going to live to their 90s. We just got to make sure these programs are solvent for the future. And, that you know, that's something that both parties need to address at some point here soon. Alex, final word is yours. Listen, everybody, it's a big election Tuesday, May 14th. It's a big election. Please get out and vote. Do your civic duty. Do your research in my race and the others. Make that vote count Tuesday, May 14th. Early voting is going on right now. Tomorrow, Saturday is the last day to early vote. Polls are open 9 to 5 in downtown Charlestown, Charles Washington Hall. And in Berkeley County, there's three locations you can vote. So just please get out and vote. And I look at the candidates. Uh, do, do your duty. Remember, as, as was mentioned, this primary is pretty much a general. And that's true, I think, for governor, attorney general, and all the other races. The winner of their primary is going to be your elected official. So get out there and vote, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you guys for what you do, and thanks for having me on. Thank you, Alex. Best of luck to you. Say hey to your mom for us. Okay, okay thanks. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Alex Mooney at 